According to knife theory, the bigger, the heavier, the folding knife, the more beating it can take. Throw a lock on a lock, and you can baton right through that log. Okay, that's really not true. And by the way, I exchanged my Lion Steel SR11 at Blade HQ. Big thanks to them for flexing the return policy. But unfortunately, that lock bar still flexes more than their return policy. No need for another video, just letting you know that, well, it still has this problem. But we're not here to talk about the $200 Lion Steel. We're here to talk about another big ass flipper the HX Outdoor ZD 010. Unfortunately, this video can't answer why we need a folder that weighs as much as a fixed blade, or if you'll ever amount to anything. So let's stare at the numbers for a minute and see if we can figure out why videos of a similar length are more watchable according to analytics. And there's the blade length and the cutting edge. Oh, I think I figured it out. The handle size and the grip area. Made for big hands. And the spine thickness and the handle thickness. And the tallness closed and the flipper protrusion. So there are a few key differences between my Italian made flipper that costs $200 and this $16 flipper made by fine Chinese craftsmen. And none of those differences will make me carry any one anymore. But a big one of those differences is the steel. The ZD-010 uses 8 CRR14MOV, which has never been a steel I've seen anyone go out of their way to praise. It wasn't razor sharp out of the box, so after my minor beatings, it took me about 30 minutes to touch up. Oh wait, does that mean it's a super steel? Oh no, that would take an hour. It features a drop point and a very slight hollow grind with a semi-polished satin finish. It has real thick jimping on the blade spine and thins out near the tip. So I don't know about using it as a pry bar, but it's cheap enough. Or you could just go buy a pry bar. Blade centering is also pretty good. The blade is deployed by a flipper stud and can really be deployed easily however you hold it. It is one of the smoothest ball bearing flippers I have ever tested. Not necessarily the fastest because of its blade size, but it's pretty close. If it had a stronger detent, it would rock it out like an assisted. Still though, it's much smoother and easier to deploy than my SR11A, but it has kind of a weak detent. So if you drop it like I did, the blade would probably pop out or maybe accidentally open in your pocket. Maybe not though. The flipper stud is nice and smooth and probably the least fatiguing flipper I've used from full open to close. You could flip this thing all day and it not bother you. The blade is locked into place with a liner lock. That's neither overly strong or secure, but it's as reliable as my Lion Steel Roto Block, with even the Roto Block engaged. Roto Blocks transform. For regular use, it's a fine lock. Whacking the spine on the lock repeatedly didn't cause it to fold, although I think it did once when I threw it at the stump. So I said detent was sort of weak, and it doesn't take much to deploy the blade. You can fling it open like this. The handle. The handle is a nice size. It has a full liner with a little bit of skeletonization, or rather weight-saving holes drilled. Otherwise it would weigh 8 ounces presumably. It has G10 camo scales that facilitates a new knife every few months when you use it in the woods frequently. The G10 and various ridges allow the knife to be not too slippery when wet and create some great hot spots when using it hard. Although regular pocket knife use, it's you know, fairly comfortable. I don't really need the thick jimping up top, but then again I don't need a nearly 7 ounce folder either. The pocket clip ain't changeable or reversible or reassignable. Tip down blade forward in my right pocket. That gets a thumbs down for tactability. Okay, so, um, let's see. I think the need for a folder this large is basically overcompensating. Something I guess I could say for about three quarters of my knife collection. Let's look at a few other big knives, like the SR11, which has a slightly smaller blade, a more comfortable handle, but it's also a harder knife to flip with a stronger detent, but a lock that functions the same despite the marketing. Let's see, uh, how about another knife I basically have no practical use for, but I spent $160 on, the Spyderco K2. It's bigger, with a handle that doesn't feel as comfortable. It looks imposing and tactical, even though it doesn't have a beard and a tight shirt. Okay, I stole that joke from a subscriber. I prefer the Spyderco because it's bigger and weighs the same and I paid more for it. 
that actually is a consideration for a lot of people and how much they like their knives. Okay, another Chinese flipper I think that showed up in a video or two ago. This one sucks at flipping. It's heavy, and even its parents don't like it. What a disappointment. The Enlin EW054, something I keep around for a reason I can't think of. I actually liked that review because it has a Halloween theme. These are like 15 bucks too. I don't know, uh, one more. How about the D2 steel and another large knife? You'll see in a review from me very soon, maybe like tomorrow or today or a week from now. I don't know, it'll be a surprise. The Y-Star, JIN01, which looks like something out of the Soviet Union from the 80s. I like the clean design of that one a bit better, even though it ain't a smooth AF flipper like this. Okay, should you buy this knife? Or why should you buy this knife? Well, I don't know. You figure it out. I don't even know why I buy expensive knives that I don't use, so I'm not going to give you any help here. All right, okay, here's one thing. It flips easier than probably most or all other knives you own, and it could conveniently open on the ground if you drop it, so there's that. If you like this review, follow me on Instagram, which serves as a preview for stuff I'm going to review here, and pictures of beer. Subscribe. Click the bell below the video to get a spam email every time I release a new video and every time I piss. Give the video a thumbs up, or if you are one of my regular thumbs down bros, then, you know, do what you gotta do. Okay, I think I said everything I need. Go and watch one of these other videos that'll pop up on the screen here. Many of you haven't. Gearbest provided this knife for review. Thanks for watching.